Well, hello and uh, welcome to another session of Learning Together, sponsored by the Rossi's Roses Foundation. Um, last week, or last class, we studied three concepts, well, actually four concepts. We discussed factorials, permutations, combinations, and also the multiplication principle. I'll quickly do a review of the, the topics we covered, the key points. And then what I'm gonna be doing today is I'm gonna be applying those principles to different practical questions. So you will see when to use what, so you can see a difference. So the first thing I would like to cover is the multiplication principle. Okay. What it says is that if you have n ways of doing one thing and m ways of doing another thing, the number of ways of doing one followed by the other is just by multiplying the two different quantities. So, for example, if uh, lunch consists of a drink, a sandwich, and a fruit. And you were told that there are four drinks to choose from, five sandwiches to choose from, and there were three different fruits to choose from. And you're asked, how many different lunch specials could you organize? Such that you have one drink, one sandwich, and one fruit. So the, the, the arrangement has to be different. How many different ways could you arrange your lunch? And the answer would be, we use the multiplication principle. We say, okay, we talk about drink, we talk about sandwich, and we talk about fruit. How many drinks? Four. How many sandwiches? Five. How many fruits? Three. And therefore, the number of ways of taking one drink, one sandwich, and one fruit is going to be equal to four, five, 20, three times 20, 60. And that would be the answer. Okay, that's called the multiplication principle. Very important that you know that difference, okay? It's also very often we can use, say for example, outfits. If you have five bottoms, eight tops, and uh, four sandals, and you're asked how many outfits could you create that involves a bottom, a top, and a pair of sandals? Then five times eight times four, which is equal to 160. Okay, that's the multiplication principle. So that's one. Okay. The next principle is factorial. We discovered that n factorial. That's the notation, the number followed by the exclamation sign is defined as n times n minus one times n minus two times n minus three all the way to times one, where zero factorial is equal to one. So for example, if I ask you what is four factorial, it is equal to four times, what is four minus one? Three. What is four minus two? Two times one. Equal to four threes, 12, two twelves, 24. And that would be the answer for four factorial. And of course, we also did arithmetic involving factorials. For example, if I ask what is five factorial divided by three factorial, you could find five factorial, you could find three factorial, then divide them, and that's your answer. Or 
we discovered last week that five factorial is five times four times three times two times one. Three factorial is three times two times one. So this, the bottom, cancels the last three at the top. So this is just really five times four equal to 20. So when you know this, you can actually shorten your work very much, okay? So that takes care of factorials. Then we talked about permutations. We said a permutation is a number of ways of arranging a certain set of items so that the order is important. So it's making arrangements so that the order is important. In other words, if first, second, and third is important, then that's a permutation. But if what comes first, if, if it's only a group that you're looking for, you don't care about the order, then that's not a permutation. So permutation, the order is important. And the, the notation that we use is NPR. So it's N factorial, sorry, it's N superscript R subscript. And that's defined as N factorial divided by N minus R factorial. So this is N items taken R at a time. For example, if I have, say, eight books to choose from as to how I'm gonna read them. And this week I say I'm gonna read three books out of the eight, three. And the question is how many different ways, how many different sequences could I use in terms of the order? Which one first, which one second, which one third? So it's eight of them and I'm gonna read only three. How many different ways could I read them in terms of order? It would actually be 8P3, which will be equal to 8 factorial over 8 minus 3 factorial. Okay, that is it. 8 is your N, R is your 3. Okay, so it's 8 factorial over 8 minus 3. That's equal to 8 factorial over 5 factorial. And we discussed that this five factorial cancels the last five here. So we're truly dealing with eight times six, sorry, eight times seven. Times six and whatever that is, eight times seven is 56 times six equal to 66 is 30, 65 is 30, 336 ways of doing it. Okay, so that's permutation. For example, if you have a race and you have 10 people running, you want to know who comes first, who comes second, who comes third, assuming that there are no ties. Then again, it will be eight, sorry, 10 factor 10 C3. 10 items taken three at a time. Okay. And finally, from last class, last discussion, we had combinations. And again, this covered how many ways could you select a certain number of items from a group such that the order is not important. Common example, you have 20 people and you're planning, okay, you have a team of 20 people and you want to create a subcommittee from the 20 to plan a special event. So you need say four people out of the 20 to plan a special event, a group of four. But within that group of four, there's no position involved. It's just a group of four, any four. Then that's called a, how many combinations can you get out of 20? So it's actually 20 C4. And the definition of combinations is NCR equals to N factorial over N minus R factorial. Look at that, it's very similar to permutations, but now we're gonna have R factorial as another piece to it. 
So it's n factorial over n minus r factorial times r factorial at the bottom, at the bottom. So the number of combinations, because you're dividing with an extra portion, the number of combinations will be smaller than the number of permutations, okay? So in this case, it'll be 20, 20 factorial over 20 minus four factorial times four factorial. And of course, this is 20 factorial over 16 factorial, four factorial. And the 16 factorial cancels the last 16. So now we have 20 times 19 times 18 times 17 over four times three times two times one. And then you just have to simplify this. In my case, I can see that we have uh, four can go into this, six can go into that. So this is five, and this is six, this is three. So it's five times three times 19 times 17. And grab my calculator. And what do we get? We end up with 19 times 17 times 15. And that equals to 4, 8, 4, 5. I also said, we also discussed last week that the calculator can be used to calculate 20C4 by pressing 10, looking for the, the button that involves combinations, permutations, and factorials, and selecting the correct one, and the calculator will do the work for you. Okay, so that's a brief summary. And now we're gonna go into some questions. I will read the question, and then we'll decide what we will need to do to answer the question. So I will start off, I'll start off pretty simple. Okay, we're selecting a jury of 12, and you have a pool of 32. You need, for this case, you need 12 jurors to be selected and you have 32 to choose from. How many ways could you select 12 of these if the order is not important? You just want them to be a jury. It doesn't matter if they're the first or the second or the third. They all have the same vote. So in this case, we're talking about combinations. It's gonna be 32 C 12. And with that, I could take the calculator and the calculator will do the work for you. You do 32, and in my case for this, we do 32 PRB. And since we're doing combination, I select NCR and I'm selecting 12 items at a time. Press enter. And what do I get? I get a large number it is equal to 225. 792 and then 840. So 225,792,840. That's what 32 C12 would be equal to. So that's combinations. Let's look at another one. This one says. How many ways can nine starting players be chosen from a softball team of 15? So the team is 15 and you need nine starters. So what it's saying is that it doesn't matter who is first. You just need nine people to start. So it will be 15 C9, okay? Here's another example. Four seniors will speak at graduation. Four seniors will speak at graduation. If 30 students audition to speak, 
how many different groups of four speakers can be selected. So we just need a group with four. So just four, it doesn't matter. The order is not matter, does not matter. So it would be 30 C4. I think you get the picture. We just want a group of four. Nobody has any position. First position doesn't mean anything. Second doesn't mean as long as you're in the group of four. So that's permutation, okay? Now, I should quickly tell you that sometimes instead of seeing this as 32 C12, you will see permutations, sorry, not permutations, sorry, combinations written as 32 to 12. Sometimes it is noted like that, especially when you're doing binomial theorem. That's the popular way to do binomial theorem or to find the entries in Pascal's triangle. I just want to put that out there so you, whenever you see that when doing binomial theorem, you know that this is actually dealing with combinations. It's the same thing. Okay? Okay. All right, let's try, let's try a different question. Okay. Let's try something different. Something different. Okay, here we go. How many ways can five paintings be lined up on a wall? How many ways can five paintings be lined up on a wall? Well, if you're talking about how they're lined up, the ways that they're lined up, it sounds like the order is important. Should you put this one first or should you put it last? So this is talking about permutation. So you have five paintings and how many ways can you arrange them on the wall or line them up on the wall? So now we have five P five. Five paintings, how many ways can you arrange them or line them up on the wall? It didn't say take a part of the group. It says all five. How many ways can you arrange them in order on the wall? So five P five, of course, is equal to five factorial over five minus five factorial, which is equal to five factorial over what is five minus five? Zero factorial. And don't forget, in the definition of permutation, we said that zero factorial is uno. Zero factorial is defined as one. So therefore, the denominator is just one. So that's one, so you can just ignore it. So it's actually five times four times three times two times one, which happens to be five, four is 20, six, three, two, six is 120. Okay? Let's try another one. Rob has four shirts. Four shirts. Three pairs of pants. And two pairs of shoes. It's easier. And it says that they all coordinate. How many outfits can you put together? So he has four shirts, three pairs of pants, two pairs of shoes, and they all color coordinate. How many different outfits could Rob create? And the answer for this is really, you're looking for shoes, shirt, ooh, pants, and shoes. Okay, so this is shirt. So how many shirts do we have? We have four to choose from. How many pants do we have? Three to choose from. How many shoes? Two to choose from. So therefore, the total, using the multiplication principle, four threes, 12, two twelves, 24. Okay, uh, it will get a little bit more involved. Just stay with me. Okay. In how many ways could six bicycles be parked in a row? How many ways could six bicycles be parked in a row? So you have six bicycles. So you're gonna 
put them in a row. So, truthfully, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth position. So for the first position, you have six to choose from. For the second, since you have part one, you only have five left. Now you have part two, you have four left. You have part three, you have two left. So it's two, one, okay? And of course, you multiply these, which of course you should see that it's the same as six factorial, which happens to be what? Six, five is 30, 30 times 24 equal to 720. 20. How many ways could you park in a row? Six bicycles, that's all that is, okay? Now, this one is a little bit different. Let's look at this one. It says here, and this is just maybe just for argument's sake. It says the Pennsylvania license plates have three letters followed by four numbers. So this we're talking about would be Pennsylvania license license plates. You have three letters followed by four numbers. Okay, so that's what the license plate is going to be like. And it says, if the, the same letter or number cannot be repeated, how many can be made? How many possible license plates can be made? Well, you could do this. Three letters, four numbers. So we need a total of seven characters. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we need seven spots to fill. Three letters followed by four numbers. And the first one says, says if the same letter or number cannot be repeated, so it's without repetition, no repetition. So let's go. First position, second, third, fourth, fifth, Six or seven. This is a letter. How many possibilities do I have to put right here? Then if you look at the alphabet, there are 26 letters in the alphabet. Once I've used a letter, how many do I have left for the next position? I now have 25. And then for the third position, I have 24. So now I'm finished with the letters. It says three letters followed by four numbers. So now I'm ready to put a, a digit here, a number here. How many choices do I have? Trick, is it nine or is it 10? Hmm, interesting. Is zero a number? Yes, it is. Can we use zero? Absolutely. So therefore this position, we have 10 choices. Since we can't repeat, then this has to be nine, eight, seven. And therefore the total number of license plates would be obtained by multiplying this times, this times, this times, this times, this times, this times, this times that. And what is that number? Let's see. It's 26 times 25 times 24 times 90 times. 56 equal to half. Huh. So this gives me 78 million 624,000. That is without repetition. Okay? Now, the second part of the question says that. If the same letter cannot be repeated, how many can be made, okay? So this one, B,
Okay, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seven. Okay, so the first one, you can't repeat a number, you can't repeat a digit. This one says, if you cannot repeat a letter, you cannot repeat a letter, and that's all the information you're given. You cannot repeat a letter. How many can you make? Well, if you cannot repeat a letter, then this is 26, this is 25, this is 24. Now, for the numbers, there were no limitations given for the numbers. So therefore, you would have to use 10, 10, 10, 10. You were only given limitation on the letters. So therefore, with the numbers, you could repeat. You could have one, 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 and you're great. Just don't use 666, okay? Great. And then all you have to do is to multiply these, and that will give you your final answer. So what do we end up with? 26 times, 25 times, 24 times, and that's 10,000. And that gives me, wow, this is 156. That's 156 million. If I can repeat the numbers, it's 156 million. If I can't repeat the numbers and can't repeat the letters, then it's going to be only 78 million possible. And finally, if you can repeat numbers and also letters, what would the case be? In that case, let's see if I can squeeze it right here. The last one, can it hold? Let's try. If I can repeat everything, then this would be 26, this would be 26, this would be 26, and of course, this would be 10, 10, 10, 10. That's when you can repeat everything. In that case, what's the final answer? We end up with 26 to the power of 3 times 10 to the power of 4 equal to half. This is going to give me 175 million 760,000. So, as the criteria change, the total will change. Okay? So, that takes care of that. Let's try something else. Let's try not the question and see what happens. Okay, what I got, let's see. This one says, a deli, a restaurant, has a lunch special which consists of a soup, a sandwich, a dessert, and a drink for $4.99. Hmm. They offer the following choices. Sandwich. Dessert, drink. They're asking you how many lunch specials are there? Okay, so we have for sandwiches, they tell us that we have a total of one, two, three, four, five. Five different choices. For soup, we have a total of one, two, three, four choices. For dessert, we have a total of two choices. And for drink, we have one, two, three, four, five. Five choices. So now we need a lunch special that involves a sandwich, a soup, a dessert, and a drink. And the answer to that would be five times four times two times five. 
Of course, that's equal to 20 times 10 equal to 200. So there are 200 different lunch specials that could be created, okay? And one of my favorite questions is like this, okay? favorite questions and I trick my students all the time with this one. We're preparing sandwiches and we need to know how many different sandwiches could we create if we have four different types of bread, five different types of meat, and three different types of cheeses, but some sandwiches will be without cheese because some people are lactose intolerant so they can't do cheese. So the question is how many different sandwiches could be created with this information? Four breads, five meats, three cheeses, but you also have some sandwiches that have no cheese. So the question is what's the total number of different sandwiches that could be created? Hmm. Well, you have two ways to do it. You could find the number of sandwiches that could be created with cheese, number of sandwiches that could be created without cheese, and, that's, and then add the two together. Or you could say for cheese, you have three, but instead of three, no cheese would be another option. So you could change this to four. Cheese or no cheese. Cheese, no cheese. So that's four choices you have for this particular section. So it is actually four times five times four. So four five is 20, four times 20 equal to 80. Would it work if we did it by finding the number of sandwiches with cheese? So with cheese is going to be four times five times three equal to four five is 20, three times 20 is 60. The number of sandwiches just ignoring cheese is four times five equals to 20. Add the two together, 80 and 80, same answer, okay? I always like to give that example, okay? Good. Okay, let's see if I could find, I saw one that I would really love us to to deal with. Okay. Here is this one. So listen to the information. It says here, a company places a six symbol code. Six. On each unit of product, the code consists of four digits. Four digits. The first, the first of which is Four digits, but the first digit must be five. That's a signature. It has to be five, followed by two letters. 
Okay, and it says the first of which is no, not a vowel. It is first, first, cannot be a vowel. What else? How many different codes are possible? How many different codes? are possible. So let's go over the detail. The details one more time. There are a total of six different, correct, a, a company places a six symbol code. So the code has six different symbols, whether a letter or a number. It must have four numbers and two letters. Four numbers, two letters to make a total of six. It says that the first digit or well, the first symbol has to be the number five. And it says, followed by two letters, the first letter cannot be a vowel. How many different codes are possible? Hmm. I think what is good for this is we need to set up six boxes, six positions. First, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. Okay, so let's go. The way you do it, you do it step by step. So it says here, the first position is the number five. The first position is the number five. So how many choices do I have for the first position? Just one choice, it has to be five. It cannot be anything else. So the first position has to be five. It says here, the first position is the number five followed by two letters. So the, this has a letter and a letter, one letter and another letter. But watch this, it says that the first of which is not a vowel. So the first letter cannot be a vowel. Hmm. What number goes in that box? Well, there are 26 letters in the alphabet. How many vowels are there? Last time I checked, A, E, I, O, U. A, E, I, O, U. So it's five vowels. So five from 26 gives me 21. So if this cannot be a vowel, then I'm having 21 possibilities right here. The second position is a letter. There were no restrictions placed on that letter. So therefore we have 26 possibilities for that position, no restriction. We were not told anything as to what to put there. And then of course we have three more positions, but remember we suppose have a total of four numbers and two letters. So what goes here? How many digits do we have to choose from to put in that position? I think we have 10, I think we have 10, I think we have 10. So those will be the number of six digit codes that could be created. So we can go ahead and multiply 21 times 26, 21. 21 times 26, and then whatever you get, it's going to be multiplied by a thousand. So it's prime 21 times. Oh, that's ugly. So 21 times 26 times, and this is a thousand. So that gives me 546. 546,000. Again, take the information given and apply it step by step. Okay, here's another one. One quarter 
one dime and one six-sided die are tossed. So you have a quarter, you have a dime, and you have a, a die, plural dice, singular die. The IE for singular, one die, many dice. Okay. How many results are possible? So now we're getting really funky, getting really kind of technical. So many of these real life situations are actually using the multiplication principle. They're not using permutations or combinations. They're just saying, okay, how many ways to do this? How many ways to do that? How many ways to do that? Put them all together. So we have one quarter, one dime, one die. Of course, six sides. Six sides, okay? You might not know, but they have some, they make dice that are eight sided, 10 sided. They do that, yes. But this is just a regular die, which is six sided. How many different results are possible? Well, so, so you have the quarter, you have the dime, and you have the die. So when you, when you toss the quarter, you could have a head or a tail. Two possible outcomes. When you toss the dime, it's either a head or a tail. When you roll the die, you have how many possible results? Six possible results. So the number of possible outcomes must be two times two times six. So it's equal to 24. Again, when you break it down step by step and create a picture, sometimes it's much easier to see your answer. Okay? Let's try another one. Let's try another one. Okay. Okay, so listen to this now. This one is, listen to the details. Six students are in a speech class. All have to give their speech on the same day. One of the students insists on being first. If this student's request is granted, how many different ways are there to schedule the speeches? Ah, ah. So we have a total of six students. Six. So we have first, second, third, fourth, fifth, six. So one of the six students say, listen, I get nervous very easily when I do public speaking. So let me get mine over with and done so I can relax because I will be shaking if I wait last. So they say, okay, go ahead. So for the first position, only one person because that person was given the okay to go first. For the second position, how many possibilities are there? Well, the answer is five because one person is already secured, five are left. And then after this person is selected, then four, three, two, one. So the total number of ways of scheduling the speeches will be one times five times four times three times two times one. And that happens to be 120. See, just by following the detail, it becomes easier to understand. Let's try another question. Okay.
Okay, so of the first, this is a test, but you're given choices. Ha, ah, I've done that back when I did my O levels and A levels, or for example, with the history, they say, okay, you have eight topics, write five essays out of the eight. So you can choose which five you want to write. So I remember those days. Okay, so this one says, of the first eight questions on a test, a student must answer six. Of the next seven questions, four must be answered. In how many ways can this be done? Hmm, wow. So this is a mouthful. So first, eight questions. You must answer six. Next. Seven question. You must answer. Let me double check to make sure. Of the first eight questions on the test, a student must answer six. Of the next seven questions, four must be answered. Okay. In how many ways can this be done? Well, for this part, if I select six of them that I'm answering, it doesn't say anything about the order. You just want to know which questions have I done? Which of the eight have I chosen? It doesn't matter if it is one, two, three, four, five, six, or three, four, five, six, seven, eight, whatever it is, the grouping, the order is not important. What is important is that I only have six of them chosen. So it doesn't matter if I do them in different order, the order is not critical. All you want to know is that the numbers that I've chosen is in that six. So I think for this first part, we're going to be talking about 8C6. Eight items taken six at a time. And that will give me one quantity. And then for the other part is seven items taken four at a time. And that's going to give me another quantity. So the number of ways of doing the first part followed by the second part must be the product of the two numbers. That makes sense? How many ways can I do this here? How many ways can I do this here? How many ways can I do both sets of questions? Boom, boom, multiply the two numbers. So here we go. This is gonna be eight factorial over eight minus six factorial times six factorial which is equal to eight factorial over two factorial, six factorial, which is equal to, this six factorial cancels the last six, so it's eight times seven over two, which is equal to 28. This is going to be equal to seven factorial over seven minus four factorial times four factorial is equal to seven factorial over three factorial four factorial. The four factorial cancels the last four, so it's seven times six times five. And then you still have three factorial, which is three times two times one. Three times two times one is six. Six so cancels the six on top, so this is just five times seven equal to 35. Put them together, the answer is going to be 28 times 35, which is equal to, and it's at the end of the day, so I'm not gonna even try to do that mentally. I will just go ahead and take my calculator, 28 times 35, and that gives me 980. There it is. Okay, moving along nicely. Let's see if we can find another beauty, another beauty. Okay. I did see one that I'd selected. Okay, here it goes. 
in a conference of nine schools, how many intra-conference football games can be played during the season if the team all play each other exactly once? Okay, so we're trying to see how many games can be played. Okay, here we go. So we have nine schools. Each each play the other once. Okay, so a versus B is the same as B versus A. So that's the same game. Team A playing Team B, School A playing School B is the same as School B playing School A. So the order is not important. It's not important because as long as the two teams are playing, that's one arrangement. It does not have to be, the order is, doesn't matter. So therefore, we are actually talking about 9C2. How many ways of selecting two out of the nine so that the order is not important? And of course, that works out to be 9 factorial over 9 minus 2 factorial, 2 factorial. So that equals 9 factorial over 7 factorial, 2 factorial. So that's equal to 7 factorial cancels. So that the 9 times 8 over 2 factorial is 2 times 1. So that gives us 36. If you have nine teams and they play each other once, there'll be a total of 36 games. OK? Let's see if I can find another example over here. This is. Ah, here's, one, here's one. Let me see if I could do it to the side here. Here's, here's a detail. You are going to draw four cards from a standard deck of 52 cards. How many different four card hands are possible? You're drawing four cards from a standard deck of 52 cards. How many four card hands are possible? Okay. So, total equal to 52. Selection equal to 4. Order does not matter. When you get to your hand, it doesn't matter which card you get first. You look at your four cards, those are the cards you have. It doesn't matter which one you got first. So then you can see that it's actually 52 C4. And I'm not going to try and do that mentally. I'm gonna just go to my calculator. And what do I get? I end up with 52 PRB. And this is gonna be NCR. Oops, let me clear this. Okay, here we go. 52 PRB and CR, and we're selecting four at a time. And that gives me a whopping 270,725. That's how many four card hands can be created from a pack of 52 cards. Okay. 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 Okay, here is a trick question. This one is a trick question. If I give you the word 
comma. If I give you the word common, C-O-M-M-O-N, and I ask you, how many ways can I arrange the letters of that word? How many ways can I arrange the letters of that word? Well, how many letters we have? We have six letters. So you're looking to do six key six. But did you notice that two letters are repeated? The letter O occurs twice. The letter M occurs twice. Because of that, M, M, if you switch them around, it's the same arrangement. It doesn't make a difference. You don't know, you don't have O1 and O2. They're two identical letters. So the way you account for that is you divide by two factorial for the number of O's and for the number of M's is also two factorial. So that's how you make up for the duplication. You divide by the number of repetitions that you have. So what does this become? So this becomes six factorial is, what is six factorial? Is that 720? Let's check. Six factorial, six factorial. 720, yes. So it is 720 divided by two factorial times two factorial is four. And that's equal to 180. Okay, so one of the favorite ones that we always like to do is the word Mississippi. Anybody remember how to spell Mississippi? Mississippi is M I S S I. M I S S I S S I P P I Mississippi. How many ways do you have to arrange the letters of Mississippi? Well, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So it's eleven P eleven. We're talking about arrangement, so the order is important, but there are some repetitions. So we notice that for I, we have one, two, three, four I's. So that's four factorial. For S, we have one, two, three, four, four S's. And for P, we have two P's. That's how you do it. So it is 11 P 11 over four, Factorial times four factorial times two factorial. How much is that? Well, this is some big numbers what right? we're gonna have now. 11 factorial, how much is that? So it's 11 factorial. That's a large number. So it is three, nine, nine. 168000. That's 39,916,800. And on the bottom, we have 4 times 3 times 2, 4, 3, 12. So we have 24 times 24 times 2. Okay? So when you do that, what do we end up with? So I'm dividing by 24, I get one number. And I divide by 24 again, I get another number. And then I divide by two, and I end up with the number three, four, six, five, three. 34,650. So again, this 11 letters is 11 P11. 11 P11, because it's the number of permutations of 11 items, but some of those items are repetitions. So to account for the repetitions, you divide by the factorial 
So I, one, two, three, four, four factorial. S, one, two, three, four, four factorial. And then E, one, two, two factorial. So 11 factorial divided by four factorial times four factorial times two factorial gives us 34,650. Many people do not know how to do this. When there is a repetition, doing permutations, when items are repeated. Many people do not know that, so please be very careful. It's just like if I ask you, well, we'll just leave it like that, okay? And that is a glimpse into how we can use factorials, combinations, permutations, along with the multiplication principle. I hope you found this useful and helpful. I promise you, this type of stuff becomes very, very important when we start to do probabilities. When we start to calculate probabilities, you'll see with probabilities, you do calculations. How many ways can this occur out of the possible number of results that we could deal with? And then you could calculate what is the chance, what is the probability that this thing will happen? So those are some of the things that these things become useful when applying. Enjoy the rest of your day. On behalf of the Rusty's Brosis Foundation, we thank you for tuning in and we look forward to having more of these learning together sessions. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.